Hello and welcome to Mr. Pineapple's Wonder Hour, the show where we talk big pineapples, small pineapples, hairy pineapples, and everything in between. I'm your host, Tony the Pony, and with me, as always, is the one and only, the incredible Mr. Pineapple. How are you, Mr. Pineapple? You know how I am. Ill and tired, yeah. looking and feeling like shit. Look at me. Look at me. Look at him. Dirty. Dirty boy. I'm currently in Mablethorpe. Yeah, yeah. Fucking twat. I'm in a caravan, living it up. While well, I'm here, yeah. ill as shit, having to make plans while dead. Yeah, but you're playing a game, aren't you? Does it look like I'm playing a game? Not right now, no. <laughs> How while is you're there, game? living it up with fish and chips, I'm assuming, and sticks of rock. We haven't had fish and chips yet. Have you not? When are you back? You've got to have it, mate. Back tomorrow. Oh, you've ruined it. Yeah, we're going to Skegness later, so... Oh, nice. For... To stay forever, hopefully, so I don't have to see you again. <laughs> no, just for the day. Are your kids going to ride you on the beach? Because you are a donkey, aren't you? Ah, get it. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, for quality of the episode, drips or anything. If it Probably drips. because of the connection. If it drips. Drips. Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. It's a dripping connection, you know. Th- that's the real thing. Have you got me a present? I might have. Is it a penis-shaped rock? <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> No. You can't carol me rock. It's lovely. It's lovely stuff. And sucking on a sweet penis. What more do you want? Well, that's all you need in life. Licking the tip, mate. Licking the tip. Or licking that tip. I hope it comes with balls. (laughs) Oh. Testicles for the scientific community out there. Shall we get on to the episode? Yeah, let's. The big pineapple of this week is going to be the Disney Plus exclusive film. Yes. Mulan. 1999 on uh, Disney Plus, guys. 29 99 <laughs> if you're American. What are you doing? She's getting prepared. Leave her alone. Record your podcast, she said. <laughs> you're not a very good sneaker. She was being very <laughs> quiet. You were the one that, you know. <laughs> I know, because I'm a prick. Yeah, donkey prick. You got an airy pineapple for us? No! So let's make one up now, <laughs> shall we? Oh, I finished watching Trailer Park Boys the other day. Well, way to just interrupt what I was going to say with my airy pineapple. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's fine. All right, what were you going to say, mate? No, it's it's fine now. We'll talk about Trailer Park Boys. Well, technically, I haven't finished watching it because the animated version carries on directly from the live action version. Oh, is it, di- is it direct continuation? Right. Oh. I've still not seen the last couple of live action scenes. Uh, seasons did you watch it when netflix took it over have you seen uh, some of that possibly i think when the ratio changes that's how you know that's how you know <laughs> yeah we can all agree the wrestling episode is the best episode with the green bastard as it is in every se- series of tv ever the wrestling episode is always the best episode speaking about wrestling though just not not um re- freya watched her first full wrestling match today what was it it was the Rey mysterio versus the japanese buzzsaw to jerry from 2003 on smackdown Ooh, why may i add was just that the one that was it popped up on facebook do you know one of them ones that we just put on for a laugh? Yeah, yeah. And then she was like, wrestling! So then we watched it, and she was just in awe of Tajiri, actually. I mean, Tajiri's boss, that's why. Yeah, Tajiri won. And then she was like, yeah! Oh, like, yes, the authority. Like wrestling. Here we go. Yeah, that's a weird airy pineapple, isn't it? I haven't planned one, because I've been ill as shit, you know. You've it's... been shitting out your mouth and puking out your bum hole. I've been doing stuff. I, I won't wish... <laughs> You know, to let people know how ill I've been. <laughs> but you've been playing Tony Hawk. Yeah, I'm good at it. Completed both pro skaters, 100% already. Yeah. yeah. Jack Black is in it, isn't he? Yeah, I haven't unlocked him yet. Have you not? No. We've got a load of goals to do before I unlock him. I, we will do a future Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 remastered episode. Yeah. But- you know, which may have a couple of guests on it. One being oh. Jack Black, one being Tony Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. I've uh, got my, <laughs> got the boys out, you know, to get contact with him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not weird today. You beat Grandad Dick in The Analyst. Or I Pants did. Bastard, what you want to call him. Yeah, he's Pants Bastard when he's gaming. Yeah, we played some multiplayer. Yeah. I nerded it out. I nerded it out big time. Big boy time. Yeah. 
They didn't appreciate it. No. No, no, they got angry at me. Yeah? Well, they didn't get angry, Fuck but them. they were like angry. They were like angry, but not angry. Yeah. They were like, Ryan, stop being so goddamn amazing. Like you are in every aspect <laughs> of your life. God damn it. You're showing us up, man. Nice. And I was just like, you got to suck a dick to suck a dick, haven't you? You know? Yeah. Otherwise, you're not sucking a dick. And you've got to suck at least one. You know? <laughs> Should we get onto the small pineapples? <laughs> you know what the Japanese used to say, Ant, in the past? If there's a rubber <laughs> duck, in a, if there's a rubber duck in a bath, it's possibly a lake, and it's not a rubber duck. You know? Wow. Did we say it in English as well? Yeah. It's a loose translation. <laughs> it's a loose translation. Small pineapples. Let's do we it. Have that on posters everywhere across Japan. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a rubber nice. duck in a bath. It's probably a lake. You're in a mood today, aren't you? It's not well. <laughs> it's too early. I'm just... That's what happens when you're not well. I'm pissed off with the world because I'm ill. And the Japanese with their <laughs> stupid phrases about rubber ducks and lakes. What's that all about? Bastards. What's that all about, mate? Thinking they're smart, but they ain't got eyes. Right, trailers. First trailer, The Good Lord Bird. I like the look of this. Obviously, I like yeah. the look of this. Why, because it's got Ethan Hawken? No, because it's a Western. Ah. And I love me a Western. Yeah. And it's got Hamilton's own... David. I don't know the actor's name. David. David. Diggs. Something. Diggs. Plays Lafayette and Thomas Jefferson. He don't play them in this film. He plays no. a man with a weird accent. Yeah. I showed Heather and she was like, oh, when's it coming out? Go to watch it. It's well, an Amazon Prime series, isn't it? I believe so, yes. Um, it's about an abolish abolishment. Ab- ab- do you pronounce abolishment? It? Abolish abolishment. Man, man. No, I'm trying to what abolishist. What's that? How's it pronounced? <laughs> I don't know. It's about a man who doesn't want slavery. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, let's just there. Yeah. A white man, which is like slavery is bad. You know the the white savior, as per yeah, classic yeah. trope. Classic trope. It looks the good. White man saves the black. From the producers of Get Out and Black Klansman, I believe it said. Yeah. yeah. So you know it's going to be black. <laughs> sure. Because they're two famous black. Yeah, they are. And one of them's about white people. No, both of them about white people being bad, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Much like yeah. this. Yeah. Except from the white saviour, which I'm surprised oh, yeah. they've included. Like, well, it's kind of like Adam Driver's character in Black Landsman. Never seen it, mate. Don't watch Spike Lee films, do I? No. It's a racist. It's a racist. Yeah, it's a racist. But no, this looks, yeah, it, looks it, it looks really violent as well, actually, which I was uh, which was the thing that grabbed me most, I think. Yeah. And the dialogue looks really witty as well. I won't watch yeah. it, but I'll just rewatch a bunch of that I've already seen, but well, at least we watched the trailer, eh? And that's all that matters. Yep. Progress. <laughs> Progress. The haunt, the haunting, the haunting on Bly Manor. Yeah, not for me. This I just included it for you. You watch this kind of garbage. Well, out. it's a follow up to the haunting on yeah at Hill House, is it? The haunting of Hill House. Hill House. The, ne- the Netflix smash. You know. Yeah, the Netflix haunted house thingy, majiggy. We've got another house and it's haunted. Woo! This is one that looks like yeah. it has dolls in. Yeah, haunted dolls and. Other apparitions, etc. Yeah, you know, like the I didn't watch the first season. Have you not? It's... I thought you would have done. No, that's why I wouldn't have included I've... it otherwise. Well, I've been told it's good. Um, yeah, next trailer. <laughs> Welcome to the Blum House. Included this one for you as well, <laughs> my boys. <laughs> What is it? Four short films, is it? Or is I it think just it's just four, four features. features. Oh. But they pack- yeah. they've packaged them together, I think, because they're all by Blumhouse. Yeah. I mean, they're all going to be good, aren't they? No. No, 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 no. Why? There was a little girl with, like, half a face and that. I mean, I included this for you yet again. I, I couldn't tell us. Horror died in 1980. <laughs> Well, if you like horror, guys, then you're going to like this, because it's just four random horror films, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like they've got some famous people in some of them, I think. Yeah, it seems like they're the ones he's had sat on the shelf for ages that they can't do anything with, because they're not things like The Invisible Man or Paranormal Activity or whatever. So he's just been like, throw them all together. Let's just hope for the best, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Like a like a package um, if I am Steam. A four game package, you know, uh, things that weren't too successful. Yeah. Let's get ge- let's game them all at once. <laughs> it changes his fortunes. The next trailer though, 007, the James Bond man himself, No Time to Die. Trailer two. Yeah. Shows a lot, doesn't it? I've not watched it. Didn't you watch it? No, that's why I put oh. a question mark next to it, you see. 
see. All right. Yeah. Uh, without going into spoilers, can you explain a little bit about it, I guess? Well, when I say it shows a lot, it, sh- it kind of just shows a lot of the action. It's one of them trailers where you right. think, I've seen all the action set pieces in the film now. Yeah. My mother went to the cinema mm. yesterday and she saw the trailer there and she was like, yeah, that showed everything. Yeah. She was yeah, the only it person does, it in the does cinema that. as well. Just, just to, you are? She was the only person in the cinema. Oh, that's she, all right she, now. Yeah, she had the screen to us then. What did she watch? Soldier wise, military wise, it's like about a military choir or some shit. It's based on true stuff. It's like a yeah. comedy drama type thing. Yeah. She cried twice, apparently. Only twice. Yeah, I know, amateur. <laughs> it does. It does actually sh- show like a massive spoiler. Yeah, but... I, I, I don't want to. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why. I, that's why the question mark was there. <laughs> it likes the shot of the mo- you know the motorbike going up the stairs though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it loves it loves that shot. Oh, was it was it used it the twice on the trip? <laughs> Big boy stunt, yeah. There is many like more over the top stunts in this one as well. It seems okay from the trailer. You're like fucking hell, it's Fast and Furious film here. <laughs> but yeah, next trailer, Possessor. 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 Which one was it? The sort of sci-fi looking hitmany type one with Sean Bean. Oh yeah, Sean Bean. This, this looks. Mean, uh, this looks good. It does actually. Yeah. Looks confusing as fuck. Oh yeah, it's got big brainy vibes in it you're gonna have to think about stuff i guess yeah. you know <laughs> so essentially about it's about like a an agency where they transfer your consciousness into a host body to perform assassinations that's what i gauged from the first part of the trailer you know this woman mm. seems just like a unassuming you know kind of lady she's got a family or whatever and then the guy that she's in on realizes that he's being taken over or something i think yeah. and he's like uh ah, what the what the hell or something like that i think you'll have to watch it to the trailer to sort of make your own mind it up. had sean it had sean bean it that's did. my it addition it did have Sean Bean. I was confused. I was confused for about a minute. And then Sean Bean's face popped up and I was and everything, like, yeah. everything's fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it does look good. Um, shortcut, next. Which one was this? I the watched one with them the all. The school bus that's sort of with the kids in and they get attacked by a sort of creature of the night. Oh, oh yeah. I don't think I like the look of this one. I just put it in because horror. It's all like the British days. Was it British kid? Uh, I'm not sure. No, because it were a yellow school bus. Oh. Just Americans. Just Americans. Just Americans. Yeah. It's just Americans. It's all like, it's like attack on the attack of the block on a bus. It's like Jeepers Creepers too. All oh, right. Okay. Which is on a bus. Yeah. It's, it's like, like speed. It's like a Nightmare on Elm Street Two: Freddy's Revenge with the scene on a bus. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I started watching Bill and Ted 3 the other night. Did you not finish it? No, because the illegal streaming thing weren't that great. So. What, what were you watching it on? On the Fire Stick, but the internet is terrible. Oh, is there Wi Fi there? There's not. He had, um, Daddy Fudge had to stream it off his like phone internet so yeah. it weren't, weren't great is there not like a dvd player or anything there no actually just a tv a tv that can fit a fire stick in though yeah quite a modern true doesn't have internet like on the tv though yeah but you can't anyway next trailer Shit house. teen comedy american teen angst puberty college <laughs> what i got from this trailer was that he looks like a young oscar isaac yeah and it confused the shit to... out of me i was like what the fuck is oscar isaac doing in this film he's way too old <laughs> <laughs> I, I was trying to figure out who he'd look like actually and yeah yeah oscar isaac he's like the love child of oscar isaac and oscar isaac yeah yeah it looked all right yeah. yeah i like the look of this i like a good teen comedy type thing it's a proper ryan film isn't it why is it just teen in it teen just, angst just teen in it <laughs> Indie teen angst. You're Ryan. the one that keeps putting them on there. Ryan's there. I put the horrors on <laughs> for you. The teeny bop films for me. Yeah, but the next film trailer looks amazing. LX twenty forty eight. Yeah, I like the look there. I like the look of this. Another sort of sci fi, a lot lo- lower budget than the uh, Possessor, but yeah. it looks pretty, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this Looks is about cool. yeah. It's set in twenty forty eight, obviously, and the 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 bastard people of the Earth have caused that much damage to the ozone layer that they can't go out in daytime because they will burn to death, Terminator style. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so they do all the stuff at night time and also in some kind of VR reality world type thing. Um, and because they're all there, everyone's sort of depressed, so they all have to take this drug. Yeah, <laughs> right. they're happy. But the character played by James Darcy, who played Jarvis in Agent Carter, you know. Oh, yeah. Represent. <laughs> he's a guy who just wants a normal life. Like he goes, he's got kids when not many people are having children, and he goes to an office job during the day on all this kind of shit and then Delroy Lindo appears and I don't know what happened yeah it's very this could happen kind of um, yeah yeah the, the kids in VR like there's a kid shooting people in his bedroom yeah there's, and there's a kid who's eating cereal just like <laughs> fucked up on his VR headset like, in a room with one on in a bikini with like a fan blowing on her like she's on a beach or some shit kind of yeah thing. looks good though I'm a I'm enjoyed the the trailer I'm enjoyed the trailer a long time it's that sci-fi kind of realm that films like Guns Akimbo and <laughs> gamer and stuff are in but hopefully this is better no it looks very different to them they're actiony type things this is a big brain yeah i guess this is a thinker i think but in the there's like that what did he say like a day walker woman who can survive outside i don't think it's going to be actiony i think there might be brief bits but we'll have to wait and see won't we yeah the next trailer i nearly skipped because I thought it was just going to be a generic rom-com kind of shit. But no, no, no. Idiot. I met a girl. Why would I include it? Why would I include it if it was generic? I don't I, know. I was I like, what is this? Chorus for you. I include non-generic rom-coms for Ryan. <laughs> but no, I met a girl. This looks confusing, doesn't it? No, 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 no. Not confusing. No. Do you not think it's going to pull the floor out beneath our feet? Put, do you mean pull the rug? Not the entire floor. No, just the, the just entire the floor. floor with this. All to your doom. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's about a guy who's got schizophrenia mm. and he meets a lady woman. Does he? Back, back, just backtrack a little bit. He lives with his brother and his brother's like lady woman mm. and they're having a baby or getting married or something. So the brother has to move out. But then he meets a girl... And then he's like, oh, yeah, we've arranged a date for you to meet her, but she doesn't turn up. And then it turns out she's in Sydney. But is she real? Is she in his brain? Oh, my God. <laughs> and there's a man dressed up as a superhero. Yeah. Who is in his Who's brain. Who's also in his brain. No, not also in his him. brain. He is in his brain. The lady woman might not be in his brain. Right, yeah. I like Australian comedy. I like Australian cinema. I like Australian TV. Australian. They make good shit. Home and away. No, Neighbours. I was more of a Neighbours guy. All oh, right, you're a Neighbours fanboy, eh? Yep. Yep, 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 um, yep. <laughs> but yeah, this looks good. I like the look of All it. All the trailers actually look pretty good. It's yeah, great. it's a decent week for trailers. There were I had to watch so many trailers yesterday while feeling like shit. They all melded into one at <laughs> one point. There was one where a Danish man became a woman, and I was like, I was going to include it, but then I thought, I don't like the Danish. Is that the Eddie Redmayne film, Danish Girl? No, this one looks good. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Robert De Niro one as well, weren't there? Was there? Yeah, I saw it this morning, but I didn't watch it. I thought you were about cross-dressing. I was like, Stardust came out oh, ages no, ago. No. Just... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm a, I'm a girl. Good. Watch it. Faith-based. Next. <laughs> I like the look of this, obviously. <laughs> I know. I know you do. What do you mean you know I do? <laughs> it looks outrageous, doesn't it? Mm. A couple of Christians trying to cash in on the <laughs> the Christian filmmaking I don't industry. I don't even think they're Christians. I think they're just you know, boys. Boys who are just trying to cash in on the, the Christian <laughs> film craze. <laughs> Faith-based films make a lot of dollar. Yeah. It's it's true. It's it's really true. And I feel like we should make one. Yeah. I could easily write that. Let's do it. Money. So you know, turn out. Mr. Mr. Pineapple's actually Jesus. Nice. It looks really <laughs> funny, this, though. Like, it's about, it's not only about a comedy about fucking religion and shit, but it's a comedy about filmmaking as well, which, uh, yeah. Uh, and it's got my boy Lance Reddick in as well. Um, I like it when he asks them, what do you guys even know about making films? And they're just like, <laughs> 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 it's like that it really made me laugh <laughs> it just looks really fun you know i feel like that's that's what michael bay says when he's in a meeting yeah boom <laughs> explosion megan shuts off boom megan fox ass boom, <laughs> megan fox ass. boom! But yeah, it's got uh who's it got in it it's Reddit. that that's guy yeah the guy who everyone knows from Anchorman. David Koish. Um, the bald guy. Yeah. Yeah. 
him. He's got him in. So if you like him, you got to watch it. It looks good. I, I'm, I like the look of it, man. Obviously, I do. MLS trailer, 10 minutes to midnight. No, it's not the Charles Bronson film from the 80s. <laughs> that no one's so, heard of on this podcast other than me, probably. <laughs> it's a vampire film. I like the look of this. Yep. What do you mean, yep? <laughs> now you do. Why do, why do you know I do? <laughs> Just watch the trailer and you know that you like the look of it. It looks alright, doesn't it? It, it does look alright, to be fair. Yeah, it's about a woman who has a radio show and she's doing like her last broadcast kind of thing. I don't know if she's been sacked or what have you. But she gets bit by a bat and then some shenanigans happen in a radio studio with her and her co-workers, etc. And there's a bit where he's like fingering her. Yeah, it looks very hashtag me too Yeah. Yeah, um, I like the look of this. It looks funny. It looks weirdly sexy in places. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it doesn't look overly scary, which I liked. But I never find no. high films to be scary, overly. No, can't think of one really that's scary. Probably that, what is it? Uh, a steak fan's so... got some scary bits in, actually. Quite like yeah. steak, yeah. What one were you talking about, sorry? Uh, there's so many days at night. Oh, 30 days. 30 days at night. Yeah. I've only seen bits of that. That had some good. jump scares in, from what I remember, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think vampires work best as in action films. Yeah. I, I feel like they work better in action horror than just straight up horror. Yeah. You'd Unless like... you're going to go to the like Dracula yeah. classic route. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Rather than your Dracula on dolls, caves, caves, caves. In a cave. <laughs> caves. <laughs> caves. Charles Dance, mate. Charles Dance. Uh, he, he's what looking a... good. At... Well, and that's the main story of the week. <laughs> Charles Dance is getting some. <laughs> He is, and he's... Uh... At 73. She looked fit, though, to be fair, man. I know. Old lady, man. She she toned. She clearly works out he's, on his dick. He's toned as well. I'd fuck them both. They I'd, do look good I'd in pay that. To, I'd pay to watch them fuck. <laughs> in that water, kissing. He's proper tongue deep in that, isn't he? I, do, I know. Yeah, I'll just... <laughs> Did things to me. <laughs> Good old Charles. Man, never it literally popped up. They became engorged with blood. <laughs> you know? It literally Boom! popped up on mm -hmm. Apple News popped up and it said, Charles Dance has seen spotted with his new girlfriend or something. I'm like, oh, well, I've got to look at that, haven't I, boys? You've, you've <laughs> got um, like notifications and things out there for searching the internet if, in case anything pops up. Yeah, got to look after my boy, haven't I? You've got to. You've got to. <laughs> should we get on to the news? I feel like we should, yeah. Uh, Rocky Four getting a director's cut as his Godfather 3. Yeah, I don't what? know why. <laughs> I don't either. Um, I love Rocky it's Four. Um, apparently, yes. you know, you've seen Rocky Four, right? Yeah. Which one? Who's he versus in this Ivan one? Drago. Right, ah, yeah. He dies, yeah. he dies. My boy Dolph Lundgren, mate, innit? Yeah. I'm collecting all his tapes, aren't I? Got some good air in that Aquaman film. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. You so you've seen Rocky Four, and you know Paulie, his brother-in-law, is in it, right? And yeah. he gives him that fucking robot for his birthday. Yeah. Essentially, they're cutting out all the eighties robot stuff. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are we add they're adding new stuff in though? Aren't they? I'm not sure. So for just literally cutting things out of the film. I I'm not. I don't know. Unless they might have found some new footage that they recorded way way back when. I don't know. All I'm hoping is they put new footage in of Sylvester Sloan as he looks now, because that'd be amazing. Nice. <laughs> what about Godfather 3? What are they Wait, doing? Godfather 3 is now, what, 30 years old? Shit. Jesus. It's a much maligned film compared to the original two. Um, yeah. It's on the list of 500 films I need to watch, actually. Oh. So is one and two. Number one, actually, is The Godfather, the number one yeah. film of all time in 2008, apparently. Oh, all oh, right, okay. Not for me. Long, long film. I ain't ever seen them. I've only seen number one. Maybe we should uh, do The Godfather trilogy. No, no. How long do you think it's going to be until they make a sequel? To The Godfather? Yeah. I'll or reboot it. it. In 12 years. 12 years? Yeah. Called it now. Put it in your diary, guys. 12 All years right. from now, you'll be watching Godfather 4. On this day. The Godfather in. <laughs> <laughs> Deaths. Next. Damn right. Dead. The only things that get me through the fucking week. Have you got them all? No. Who's dead? Tell me. Norm Spencer. Oh, you know Norm. <laughs> he was, uh... Not this again. What? I mean, not this <laughs> last week when he was like, you know, Steve Summer. Steve Earl, mate. You know Steve Earl. <laughs> Steve Earl. 
He's a lad. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, Norm Spencer is a Canadian actor and voice actor. You probably best know him for being Cyclops in X Men. You know the oh, yeah. series and stuff. Yeah. Um, and he was he voiced him in the Marvel vs. Capcom games as well and stuff. Right. Um, yeah, he's not really in much else that we'd probably. Uh, he's in a lot of like Canadian shit. Mm. But yeah, he's like probably best known that. No, not that. He sadly mm. weren't in that. But yeah, he's, he's mm. dead at age sixty-two. No cause of death. 62. Yeah. No age, really, is it, these days? No, possibly age. Well, I don't know. Um, Peter Licassi. You know Peter Licassi, don't you? No, mate. You do. Actor. Mm. Dead. How old? 61. 61? Yeah. That's even younger than 62. Um, he took his own life. Oh, shit. Struggled with depression all his life. Um, well, he was most famous probably for being in Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, just yeah. Just a wonderfully outlandish sci-fi horror from the 80s. I owned that on tape once, sold it for £20. Ridiculous. £20? And I got it for free. So that's bare cash. Bare cash, mate. Yeah. What did you buy with £20? Um, probably drugs, if I'm being honest. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Drugged alcohol, innit? Back in the day, wasn't it? Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, so he took his own life. Um, Ian Mitchell. Ian Mitchell, American guitarist. Oh, From that band, Basically Rollers. <laughs> Guess how old he was? 63. 62. Ah. You know Basically Rollers, they sing that song that's in, that I can't remember the words to. Yeah. What's the oh, fucking basic roller? No, what's that basic roller song? I don't know. Oh man, just give basic... I recognise the name of a guy. It's in fucking the funeral at fucking Love Actually. Bye bye baby, that's the fucker. Bye bye baby. Baby Yeah. You're the one down man. Yeah, basically rollers. Well, he's dead anyway. Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons does a better version. Shut up. Is that all the deaths? Is that, have I got no more written down? No. That looks like it is then, doesn't it? Well, Sadly. he went bye-bye baby, didn't he? <laughs> but, you know, deaths are depressing, but not as depressing as the big show show being cancelled. We don't talk about it. How do you feel about this, Mr. Powell? Well, I feel incredibly sad. I blame everyone who didn't watch it. So that's everyone. <laughs> I didn't even watch it. It's really good <laughs> in a sort of it's not good kind of way. Jesus. But, you know. I'm, it's I'm glad it's cancelled. It made me sad. Did it? Is that why you're having a shit week? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Game of Thrones showrunners, the two people that pissed everyone off last year, announced new sci-fi series with Netflix. Yeah, it's based on some kind of book, like they always do, because they can't make up their own shit. Like, we adapted that one book series, let's adapt another one. This time it's sci-fi, basically. Yeah, and they've got Netflix money, so... Yeah, they did that deal, didn't they? Um, yeah, fuck them. Adam Driver starring Rami Malek. No. No. <laughs> Sam, Sam Raimi, mate. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Adam Driver <laughs> to star in Sam Raimi produced sci fi thriller 65. Yes, it's also been written by the peeps who wrote Quiet Place, I believe. Oh. I'm unsure John as to what the film is. is about, but that's because I didn't look it up because I couldn't be asked. Next story. <laughs> Arnold Swartzen. Wait, one minute. I'm just. I've got a I need to look at what oh, 65 is about. Come on. That's just. I don't fucking know. That's stressed me out. Next story. <laughs> Arnie, the star in Spy Adventure TV show from Scorpion Crater. Yes, this is his first foray into the world of televisual productions, I believe. Really? At age old Arnie? Mm, not many years left. Oh. Yeah, but, you know, Scorpion, I've seen a couple of episodes of that. I enjoyed what I saw. What Scorpion about? Like things and stuff. Actually, I can't remember, to be honest. Is it about the Mortal Kombat character? No, no. Ah, it's not good then, is it? It's about the Marvel character. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't remember, but I think my brother watched it. Get him in here. He's dead. Oh, shit. He crashed his car again. Nah, mate. We don't joke about that. <laughs> you joked about it the other day. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. You literally said the same thing that I just said. Did I? Yeah. I don't think I did, because I have sincerity in my heart, unlike you. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it'll be cool to see him on the small screen, I guess. It's something a bit different, you know, it's 
two Bigfoot small screen, though. I know, like a good spy adventure. Dear Evan Hansen is a musical. It is. It's going to be a film. It is. And they've cast the guy that was in the musical to be in the film, because the ben guy Platt. that was in the musical is also in that Pitch Perfect film. Ben Platt, I believe his name is. Also, mm. Julianne Moore's been cast, I believe. That got yeah, my Julianne bollocks. Moore. That got my bollocks tingling. Yeah. Oh, a big, big hard on for Julianne Moore. Oh. That's... <laughs> A lot of yeah. sayings in Japanese, aren't there? A lot of sayings. The Japanese. A lot of sayings. Yeah. Yeah. Dirty chaps, though, aren't they? Dirty. Dirty Jap. Gotta wash that yellow tinge off them, ain't you? Yeah. Um, Mandalorian 2 being released in October. Yeah. So that'll give us so much to review. Yeah, in October. Look out for that future episode, guys. We'll have Grandad Dick back. Yeah, we'll get GD back in the uh, in the studio. And we can be like, Boba Fett were annoying, weren't he? Yeah. Hey, remember when yeah. he died really quick in Star Wars? Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, John Boyega. Oh, yes, yeah, go with Disney. Yeah. Yeah. See? See, these two are linked. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's like, they push the black characters and the Japs and the yellows <laughs> and every colour set for white to the side because they're racist. He knows what he signed up for. I don't understand to be, it. To be the only black guy in the galaxy. Yeah. And it's, it's funny that he's now saying bad stuff about it's, him. You know, after they supported him. Yeah. His Black Lives Matter movement and all that. It's funny how they never say any of this stuff while they're on the teat, innit? Mm. While they're suckling at that money, money teat. Yeah. Weird, innit, that? I mean, the Nine film was a bag of shit, but... I mean, they're all bags of shit. <laughs> The whole series is just a big bag of shit. No, there's there's three good films. Oh, come on, Last Jedi is good. There's three good films and Man two Menace. three good films and two passable films. Two Revenge itself. The good are Empire Strikes Back, Rouge One, and Episode Four. Yeah, and then Return of the Jedi and Solo are passable. What about Last Jedi? Never heard of it. Corona. 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 It's not killed anyone. No, but it's going after the famous people, innit? Damn right, we need more people in our death section. Work hard, you fucking bastard virus. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, AJ Styles, and Robert Pattinson have all got it. Well, Dwayne don't have it no more. He had it. Yeah. He's over it. And his family had it as well. His wife and his two uh, youngest daughters. Why tell people one? Um, as a cautionary tale. I, I watched all the Instagram video he put out. He was like, yeah. you know, we did all the precautions. We had friends over and they gave it us. So we killed them dead. <laughs> I rock bottomed him through a table. And... Yeah, that kind of well, that dog. Well, that dog shut the fuck up. I could shut my window. That would be helpful, to be fair. I'll do it. That was just a struggle getting over to that window. Oh, boy. It's not a good day. <laughs> and I have a shitload of yes. brownies to eat. Is you? Sad times. Sad, sad times. Sure. So, so Dwayne had it. He's got over it. AJ Styles has got it. Yeah, that's why we've not been seeing him much recently. And Robert Pattinson. Batman. Which halted the filming, but then it resumed it straight after because they were like, we can do other scenes, that Batman's not in. Just get a stand in and shoot him from the back, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Over the shoulder shot, constantly. Yeah. Filmmaking. <laughs> But yeah, hopefully they don't die. That'd be well, bad, wouldn't it? I need content. True. Next bit of news you're you're excited about. Army of the Dead prequel film and anime spin off. Yeah. Yep. So that film that's not even out yet. <laughs> Zack fucking Schneider. I hate him. I mean he made that one good film, didn't he? Dawn of the Dead. No, it's not a good film. Cut tits in. What more do you want? What? Oh, there's a cast picture out, right, for this Army of the Dead. And it just, every, everything looks fucking yellowy orange. Because it's Zack Schneider. <laughs> He's got to keep on brand. Is, uh, what's the actual, is it sepia tone? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this Army of the Dead is essentially an outbreak has occurred, but they managed to contain it within the walls of Las Vegas. And like a Las Vegas casino owner or a mobster or someone hires a bunch of mercenaries to go into this place and steal all his money back. Is this Resident Evil Extinction? No, it's the Army of the Dead, I think. Oh, right. And we're getting a prequel series and an anime spin off. Because why not? Nice. Why not? The anime will be good. Will it? Yeah. Will it? <laughs> why has Batista signed up to do this? Money's. Yeah, but he's been in some decent films. He is in some decent films. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, being the only one. <laughs> um, anyway, fucking Vanguard release. 
Jacquet. Yeah, the film that we talked about fucking the trailer dropped episode one or two or something. Um, yeah. It's finally getting a Chinese it. release, 30th of September, so I'll just watch it illegally. Yeah, That'd shall be... we review it if it's any good? You know, Jack and Webb we were going to review <laughs> didn't end up being good, did it? So No, it's, it, didn't, not that it didn't end up being good, it's just that we only could manage 15 minutes at a time. <laughs> we're going to watch it over a series of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> So in about a year, we'll uh, we'll do the review. We'll get back. Friday part two, new footage found on old VHS. <laughs> I, I was I, I was dying when writing this plan. Can you tell? <laughs> um, so Friday the thirteenth, the series is getting a new Blu-ray set release. You know, all of the all of them are getting um, released. Let me just get up the mm. thing. But Friday the thirteenth part two is getting yeah. pretty much footage that was lost essentially right. uh, get the goddamn fucking article up oh, aggression i'm just angry mate i'm an angry man today i just want to fucking kick someone to death <laughs> shit <laughs> right the theatrical cut of uh friday the 13th part two it was uh, cut by about 50 seconds um to get its release and uh Fans have been clamouring for those 50 seconds since, like, 1982 or whatever, whenever the film fucking came out. And finally, um, it's been unearthed. All the gruesome gore and sexy, sexy times and that oh. kind of shit, you know? Um, Got a lot of that. Yeah. What, but what's weird is it was found um, on a four-decade-old VHS tape. That's said, weird. You know, people said to me, Ryan, but VHS is dead. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, your mum falls over and breaks a hit. And fucking gets by a baboon. Yeah, to death. Mm. So I don't know why the hip is important, because she's going to be dead anyway. But I well, said it's it. But I said extra it. pain, isn't it? Was yeah. It? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. It like, just um, it's just a pretty, pretty cool story, you know. That you know you can find all these things that people thought were lost and what have you. Just thinking, like there's a story. Do you know the Atari game um, ET? Yeah, yeah. You know how they all got found in like a landfill in Argentina or somewhere because they were all buried because it was shit. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just stuff like that that I enjoy, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean they mm-hmm. had to like the tape was pretty shit to be fair. They had to like bake it in an oven to get this spool to release because they couldn't like view it so yeah it's been like a labor of love getting this like footage and stuff nice it's a shame that the blu-ray release is uh region a but what are you gonna do well, anyway and it's 150 quid fucking jesus christ well 150 dollars mm. metallica is selling out yep next story we don't need to carry that on they've been selling out since 91 because they're doing a song for Jungle Cruise or something. Yep. Next story. Alan R- Richson is Jack Reacher. Yep. He's from that show, Titans, or plays Hawkman or something. Oh, yeah. Or something. He's, He's Dick also... Grayson, isn't he? He's Dick the Kid. Dick's gay son. Yeah. Now they're like, what's going to happen to Titans? Probably going to get cancelled. It won't get cancelled. People can film two I'll shows cancel. at the same time. No, we don't. They only have two legs. Especially when those shows don't have, like, a billion episodes, probably, in each season. True. I'm I'm not a massive fan of Jack Reacher. I like the first film. I think it's really brutal. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't didn't like the second one so much. Is it because Tom Cruise is, like, 40-odd and Jack Reacher is, like, 20? He's about four foot tall. Oh, yeah. That as well, yeah. And Jack Reacher, the character, um, would be a, what, 6'5 or something? Uh, Ray Fisher is not cooperating with third-party investigators over the Justice League Warner Brothers claims. So he's probably not going to be in any more films, is he? <laughs> yeah, he claimed some stuff, but he doesn't have any evidence or anything. So, yeah, I don't fucking know. I can't care less. It's got to include some okay um, acts in China. Yeah. The prequel Witcher series that we were talking about oh, two or two, three episodes ago. Yeah, a couple back, yeah. Yeah. Jason Momoa is apparently going to be the lead. He put on a picture on Instagram, which is like a Photoshop picture of him in like some kind of Witcher outfit next to Henry Cavill and he tagged Henry Cavill in it and said hi friend or something. I don't fucking know. But yeah, it seems like that's true. So if you like Jason Mawam and you like The Witcher, Bob's your uncle, innit? And he's going to touch you. Big boys who can't act, mate. It's just what they love, innit? (laughs) 
You bastard. Evil Dead Rise. So the last bit of news. Yep. Right, let's go on to this big pineapple, shall we? <laughs> well, apparently it's going to take place in a city, which is apparently different from more the Evil Dead. Yeah, it's normally um, sort of isolated. Shacking. Yeah, there's cabins. Obviously, Evil Dead 3 set in medieval medieval times. Um, the series is set in sort of backwards towns kind of things. Um, but yeah. I'm down for any Evil Dead stuff. If I, you know, I'm down for any Evil Dead stuff. Yeah, you're a mark, aren't you? No, I'm just a big <laughs> fan. <laughs> big, big fan. Oh. Right, let's get, let's get onto this big pineapple because it's going to be interesting. Mulan. Shall right. I get some stats up? I feel like first we should just um, briefly <laughs> discuss the boycott Mulan movement that's been going on um, right, okay. before we get into yeah. the actual film itself. So yeah, the the lead the lead actress who's playing uh, Mulan. You know what's her name? I can't remember. Liu, Liu Yifei. Liu Yifei. Yeah. Um, she, I think it was last year, uh, per posted something supporting the Hong Kong police um, when there Huge. was a lot of stuff about priest brutality happening at the time um, because yeah. of a lot of pro-democracy marches and protests and all that kind of stuff. And people took to that as her advocating police brutality in, in, a, in many ways and stuff. Um, obviously, yeah, she, she wasn't at the D23 or whatever it's called, the Disney Expo that was there because of all of this and stuff and other countries like so pe people have been doing the hashtag boycott Mulan stuff and it's picking up pace in places like Thailand and Taiwan as well because China sort of has a lot of pull there too um yeah you know um we of course don't endorse like police brutality or any of that shit so no. and we're gonna so try and review <laughs> this film based you know ob objectively subjectively objectively one of them vividly and uh, not base it on that kind of movement yeah i mean i found this out after i watched the film anyway so and i knew about it last year because i'm an asian film mark yeah not a mark well a big uh, fan. Just a big uh, fan. official tweet was i support the hong kong police you can all attack me now what a shame for hong kong rip yep yep <sighs> and with that said <laughs> let's review let's get into this film Stats. I normally just do this for the Marvel films, but why not? Got 5.6 out of 10 on IMDb. 79% on Rotten Tomatoes. When I had a look last night, it was 80%. Mm. So it's gone down 1%. Release date, March 2020. No, it's, that's a lie. Release date, a few days ago. Uh, September 4th, yep. 2020. Uh, director, Nikki Caro. Budget, 200 million US dollars. Um, who, who even knows how much it's going to make? It's the most expensive film directed by a woman, I believe. Really? According to the internet, what I read yesterday, yes. 200 million US... All right, we'll get on to that, I guess. So, yeah, we'll, so you're going to let me go first. We'll let you go first, yeah. Yeah, All right. Pros. I like the... One thing about Disney films I always like is looking to see if the... <laughs> you know, the opening Disney logo. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And I like, I like it in this one because it's all... Chinese. Chinese. Chinese, yeah. Chinesey. I was going to say that, but it sounded a little bit... bit racist. Weird. Yeah. I like the costume design, especially on the, the bad witchy shapeshifty woman. Yeah. Yeah. I think it looks very nice. I like the shot of the horses when they're riding up to that first garrison, the bad oh, guy horses, they, when they think it's just one. And they break and out. break out into multiple. And also in that scene, I like it when his um, head rat like, comes off in the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Him, revealing the big baddie. I do like the two baddies. That's a note at the start. We'll uh, get on to that later. The scene where Mulan's father is sharpening the sword, the family sword. I like that scene. I think it's the best dialogue -y scene for me. Very nice. I like it when Mulan's got the sword for the first time and then she like draws it towards the camera and a reflection could be seen in like the tip of the sword. I think that looks cool. I put don't fuck with Donnie Yen. That's just a, a <laughs> general statement throughout all life because he will mess up most people. Probably. Yeah. He's the only one in this film that actually looks like they know how to wield a sword or do anything. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I like it when she when she's doing the duel with the love interest man, 
when <laughs> she does the, the jumpy spear kick thing. Well, that was very cool. I liked all the the setting up of the bad guy stuff, but it was dark and it was the only like thing that I don't know. I'll get I'll get onto that. I'll get onto like how the film actually looked. Um I liked how the bad guys just rode off and let all the like little minions take all the arrow shots for him. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. The horse chase scene was alright, I guess. Uh it just felt a bit slow when it yeah, it was just a bit weird. I did like how they switch positions on the horses by the arrows backwards. I like the sneak Sneaky, sneaky guys on top of the rooftops in the Emperor's castle bit. Uh, I like the backwards arrow shot that the... Cricket. The ball, you what? The cricket does. Oh, is that his name? Yep. Yeah. yeah. When he puts a bow behind his back and he's like, whoa! Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> and then my last pro... <laughs> The credits were the most visually pleasing bit about the film. Your pros. Right then. When watching this, I I don't have a right. I don't I don't know what I feel about this film. But I uh, right. So I'm gonna struggle in this episode to you know because everything I've written is a pro and a con at the same time. Right. Right. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of mine were to be fair. It's got my boy G Mine who plays Mulan's dad. Uh, I just put that as a pro because he's in Rush Hour and Rush Hour 3, you know. And what more do you need from a film <laughs> from man who's in Rush Hour and Rush Hour 3? It's got Donnie Yen in. <laughs> and he stars in Shanghai Nights with Jackie Chan. <laughs> yeah. Jet Li's in it, and he stars in Forbidden Kingdom with Jackie Chan. He's got, I believe, two cheeky montages in, and I like a montage. <laughs> These weren't the best montages ever, but no. I like the horse turn manoeuvre, yeah. which you referred to in a horse chase, <laughs> where the the guys are, they sort of jump down to the side of the horse and use the momentum to spin and then jump back up and they ride it backwards or something. It looks yeah, really cool. like one leg, one foot touches the ground, which bounces them back up to do like a flippy dip. Yeah. I had a lot of time for that. I, I think that might be my favourite thing in this entire film, <laughs> which is <laughs> something. Right. Well, I'm at credits, so. Right. I wrote that I think I like the action, but I'm not sure. Mm. Right. There's some good acting in this film. I think the best acting comes from Donnie Yen. I, I like the I like the witch lady. I feel like she's the best villain out of the two mm. because she has more about her than the guy who's just like, oh, my dad died in a war. Yeah. Revenge. Like, she's an outcast she, because she uses her chi, and if women use it, they're looked down upon as witches, but if men use it, they're lauded and stuff. Was chi in the original film? No. Right. There's a lot of... There's similar stuff in this film and stuff that isn't. I like that it's not a straight shot-for-shot shot remake, I think, but I'll get onto that mm. in, in a different section. Um, <laughs> it's got... I like that it had Ming-Na Wen in at the end. She was the person who presented Mulan to the Emperor, you know, after he'd been saved by her. And she voiced yeah. Mulan in the original film. Oh, also, okay. wildly misused in fucking Mandalorian, Ming-Na. Yeah. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> right, some of this film looks really nice, the way it's shot. I think it shows China nicely, even though most yeah. of it was filmed in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, 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 I don't. You just don't know, do I you? I don't know. You just, do you want to listen to my cons? <laughs> like, I'm in pain just thinking. Yeah? I'd, I can't fathom what I saw. I don't. I know what I saw. I'm all boy. <laughs> I like um, Nikki Caro as a director. Right? She directed one of my favourite films of all time called Whale Rider from 2002. Right. Wonderful piece of New Zealand filmmaking, which does female hero characters better than this. Right. Um, and it's like about a 12-year-old, so that's saying something about this film. <laughs> I like the witch. Yeah. I liked her interactions with Mulan saying we're the same. Mm. They're a bit too much, though. Yeah. It, I don't... Yeah. Yeah, I just... Mm. I don't fucking care anymore. Right, cons. All I'm going to say, right, to start it off, when this film was marketed, it was marketed as more of a, like, gritty, like, kind of... Not realistic, but realistic kind of take on Mulan. Because they was explaining why it doesn't have the dragon in or it doesn't have any songs in. My first note <laughs> is it's colourful for a gritty take. This film's a very colourful film. Oh, I, I do like the costume design as well. I forgot to say that. It's yeah. really pretty. Yeah. Put, oh boy, that wire work on the 
on the kid at the start. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. And then, because I've only seen the original Mulan once, and it was quite a while ago, I put, is this Chi thing instead of the dragon? Is that kind of what they replaced the dragon with? The Phoenix stuff, yeah. Yeah. So my and second put, was literally Phoenix equals dragon. Yeah. And then I put camera angles. Right. When someone does a flip on a film, don't mean you have to follow the action. Make the camera do a swizzle because that just makes the audience feel sick. It happened a few uh, times, didn't it? Yeah, a good few times. And there was a um, a portrait camera angle as well, which is not not fun at all. <laughs> but CG looks bad to say they had months to uh, kind of correct it. Oh, it does, done it. <laughs> <laughs> 200 million dollar budget that's the thing the, the effects and everything look garbage but the cinematography yeah. is pretty much all great minus a few bits here and there like the photography's good but everything that's going on in the shot cg wise less Oof. less so less so indeed but oh that voice is annoying uh Muk- 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 voice, i'm guessing yeah the uh hong kong police brutality woman's voice oh also yeah she's american <laughs> that's also another reason why it, it really angered oh me. Shit. <laughs> so she's an american trying to do a bad american accent because everyone in this film for some reason is kind of chinese is kind of American. They can not really tell decide on what accent they wanted to do it in. Uh, but Colours made me dislike Colours again, which one of Zack Snyder's films do. Um, I put Men Are Bad. <laughs> Just because of a whole, she hasn't experienced the outside world where men rule. Um, they should have got a more masculine-looking woman to play Mulan. Very feminine-looking, isn't she, for a man? Yeah, yeah. Tits joke. Oh, it's a joke are. about yeah, joke about tits in this film. Bit weird because she don't want a man to rest his arm on her tits. <laughs> That's, yeah, the training montage, right? Just like most actiony scenes in this film, for me, it it just felt really stale and stagnated. It just felt weird to watch, and most of the action, man. Uh, it's that Hollywood thing, though, isn't it? Where they zoom in on the character like waving a sword, but you can't actually see anything that's actually going on. <laughs> Besides some flips and shit. But why did they get rid of the songs? This training montage drags. And then I went on a r- little bit of rant. But Disney stories are that simple and generic. The authenticity of the songs breaks them up and makes them what they are and what they're remembered for. And this just seems boring. Now, but don't give me instrumentals of songs that should have been in the film. When she's stood on top of the mountain and it gives you a little instrumental bit, I'm like, fuck off. And then there's... Do you know that that scene where they walk into the 4th Battalion and all, everyone's dead, basically? It reminded me of 300, just because of a colour scheme. It goes from really bright, red in your face and colourful flowers to boom, everything is black and dark and looks like a Zack Snyder film. I didn't like the editing. Every conversation had about 20 cuts in it. Some, like, a millisecond long as well, which... <sighs> Um, right, we got rid of the dragon <laughs> because it was too kind of magical and they didn't want to include it because of, they didn't want to cast the talking dragon, I'm guessing. But then they had a woman who can shapeshift into a bird and they have a magical weird phoenix thing that's flying around that saves Mulan and she rises like a phoenix. I just don't, I don't get it. Especially when the dragon's like a fan favourite character as well. I mean, um, I'm going to discuss that in a, in a moment or two. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we? But the the whole, oh, this is the scene where she she shows everyone that she's a woman and stuff. And she lets her hair go. And I just thought it just doesn't have the same impact. It just feels weird. Um, bad fights. Right. In the fight where she realises, ooh, I can cause an avalanche, and we're loading up the slingshot thing. It's a catapult. She, Come on, man. Yeah, it's like catapult. you've never been in battle. Mulan teleports. She whistles a horse <laughs> while we're just about to load the catapult up, and then just about, as they're just about to fire it, she's magically behind them, on top of this mountain thing, behind a fucking avalanche. Uh, is this Star Wars? Why? <laughs> Referring to the scene where she literally says, Join me and together! <laughs> we can rule the galaxies. <laughs> we can rule China. <laughs> 
Jet Li, master of all materials. Because the only bit of action that Jet Li does in the whole film is rip a piece of cloth in half and whack some guy in the face with it. <laughs> the original bad guy of Mulan it basically shouldn't be in this film. He's so overshadowed by this witch woman that his, his death is just like, oh, who cares? It To me, it doesn't seem like a threat at all in the, in the film because it's more focused on this magical bird lady. When when someone, when Jet, is it Jet Li that says, rise up like a, the- like a phoenix? And at that point, I just put, oh, fuck off. I mean, it takes a good half an hour to finish the film after she's killed the fucking bad guy. It don't take half an hour. No, that's exaggerating, but it takes a long fucking time. She's got to go back home. You think it, yeah, you think it's over when she goes back home, but it's not. And then Donnie Yen has to turn up and be like, blue, 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 blue. And you're like, just end the film. She's killed the bad guy. She's got what she wanted. She's gone back home. Happy, happy stuff. Happy days. That's, that's the end of my cons. Right. Don't <laughs> tell me a film is not going to be fantastical, right? <laughs> and then have a bunch of chi and fucking witches and phoenixes and roll wall running fuckers and stuff right don't lie to me disney right yeah. right they literally said it was going to be a straight up like war film yeah it right <laughs> <laughs> it panned right it panders so much to the chinese market this film because disney are fucking cooks for the chinese market yeah. Because the original Mulan didn't do well in China because of the songs in Mushu. Right, okay. <laughs> I, I can see what's happening. <laughs> right. So, like, because China is the second biggest film market in the world. And, like, especially the Marvel films especially, they, they get edited to, to band to the market. And it, it's just fucking sickening. Like, have some <laughs> fucking backbone about you, man. Have some artistic dignity i don't fucking change what you want to portray just to make some fucking cash like little fucking bitches oh <laughs> god damn i hate films <laughs> it's true though it's just ugh. don't give me musical cues to songs that are in the original if you're not going <laughs> to include them why did wes anderson appear to direct that one scene where she's going to get dolled up to meet the matchmaker when all the makeup oh. appears on the fucking table one item at a time that yeah i don't i didn't understand that it took me out of the film yeah i was like is this a disney film or am i watching some indie shit you know yeah Who knows? Oh, oh. right the action <laughs> you know as i said i think i like the action but also, I don't. I've seen it done in better films. Yeah. This film lifts a lot from other kung fu cinema, other Asian cinema, you know, Bollywood cinema. Just every <laughs> it lifts a lot. It, it looks too staged. Yeah. And it shouldn't. It's that classic thing of, like, the main character's fighting one person, so everyone in the background has to kind of look like they're doing something. Yeah. Though I did like the backwards arrow thing. I enjoyed yeah. that. that. And the spinny horse thing, mate. Two redeeming features of the film. Yep. Right. Jet Li. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm going to let... Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you take this one. Because, yeah. World renowned martial arts expert, Hong Kong action film megastar, very recognizable, you know, action man. Some some would say he's good at kung fu. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Some would say that's all he's good at. Why, I uh, ask, why would you cast him in this role of a man who sits in a throne? I didn't even realise it was him till like, near the end of the film. Why? Because there's a big golden light. No, not that. Up. I'm just angry at the filmmakers. This is almost just a ceremonial part, you know. He does, he, uh, let the boy off. Let the boy just cut loose and have fun and kick the shit out of a bunch of people. It's Jet fucking Lee. But it, they should have swapped the other training guy with Jet Lee. Like, right. wouldn't it make sense to have Donnie Yen and Jet Lee as the two martial arts trainers in the film? Or don't just make Jet, Jet Lee the bad guy. Don't cast Jet Lee. <laughs> right. just, don't, just don't do it. <laughs> and put him in two fucking scenes. Just don't be don't be doing my boy like that. Right. Donnie Yen. Right. I like how he waves the sword around really fast. I don't. <laughs> Whoever did the action choreography on this film needs shooting. <laughs> Why did he wave the sword around really fast? And because American 
they don't understand. It looked like it was sped up as well. Don't cast my boy, Donnie Yen. <laughs> right? And Jet Li. And not have them in a fight scene together. It makes no sense. Donnie Yen, world-renowned martial artist. One of the best. Possibly the best <laughs> in terms of his fighting ability. <laughs> like, everyone has said he will fuck all of them up. Like, yeah. all the or Jet Li, Jack Chan have all said, yeah, he's just a badass, you know? Oh, he barely got to do anything. He was just there like, yeah, I'll introduce you to my daughter. It's in a bit. <laughs> been a pleasure yeah right there's a cricket in the original animation another lucky cricket yeah that a grand who isn't in this film character wise gives to Mulan so they just took that character and made it a fat Chinese man yeah cricket a bit weird Mulan has a sister for some reason yeah did she not in the original I really can't remember the original no, no she didn't the sister adds nothing to the film uh tonally this film shifts way too 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 often yeah <laughs> it's ooh 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 that's what I meant by like one minute's bright, happy, yeah. funny people, and then boom, thousands of dead people in a field. Right. I'm all I'm all for not being shot shot remake, you know. But if you're gonna use the things from the original film, use them pro- properly. Like the avalanche is in the original film, obviously. But yeah. in the original film, they see Mulan as the one who f- fires the thing to make the avalanche happen. In this, they don't see that, so it doesn't have any emotional resonance for the characters to understand. I don't get what where they were coming from with that um in this film mulan is already well trained because of this chi bollocks she can already yeah. just fuck everyone up so yeah. when she walks up the mountain with the water it again has no impact like unlike in the original it's film not really a training for her is it it's just yeah. her going i'll just be good now i guess and, yeah unlike in the original film where she trains and then you know she has to climb up the pole thing to get the arrow and it's like yeah, yeah that that works that's character Did she even do that in this there's that's not in this no she walked up a mountain because she's got chi um she's got <laughs> chi compared to having character development ah. you know did you like the nudity scene where is where his towel falls off Oh, no, not that one. I mean, when Mulan strips down naked and swims in the, the lake well, thing. That's in the original, isn't it? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. So, the character in the original is the love interest and the training man, right? They split that into two characters for this film. Donnie yeah, I thought that. And... I, I got right confused. Yeah, because apparently in this day, you're not allowed to be in a relationship with your superior, um, even if it's consensual. Right. Um because you know Disney but they do like to pander to the Chinese market don't they just not I, I thought she was just going to fuck Donnie Yen instead but I don't know I don't do know to, do you want to hear my summary or are you still I don't know anymore yeah yeah yeah, yeah. All right, my summary. This is why Disney should focus on original films and not remakes. Because there's a good film in here somewhere. Got to admit that. There's some kind of good film somewhere. However, because it's a remake, you can't help but compare it to the original. And without the gimmicky songs and the dragon sidekick. Well, because still, it still looks cartoonish, in my opinion. It still has all the bright colours and everything's over over coloured and because of that and it done it kind of replaced the gimmicky stuff with worse gimmicky stuff and that's why it's shit <laughs> also daddy fudge watched this with me and he said boring as hell that's his that's his summary for everyone listening it went on for like half an hour longer than the original i believe yeah 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 what's your summary well, well my original summary was mm, and that's still the summary because i don't know I, I don't know what I saw. I, was, I can't fathom that anybody would make this film. It was like a half-finished film as well. I don't get it. And the re- the fucking critics have been all giving it good reviews and shit. I know. Which is one, insane. One was like, this is the best live-action remake that they've made and they should continue down this path. I was like, they're getting paid. <laughs> yeah, Empire Magazine for sure. They've got to get every Disney film a four-star rating, haven't they? Otherwise, they'll not get to review them anymore. See, I... Have you seen Aladdin? No. Because I've heard that's really, really good. And that yeah. keeps most things in. I've heard it's bad. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'll try and I'll try and come up with a quick summary then. Uh, that's not um, wasted talent pandering to the Chinese film market. Cool spinny horse maneuver. <laughs> Backwards arrow shot. Pretty costume design. Shitty action. <laughs> 
overuse of bad computer generated imagery yeah. why was he sat down for most of the film bad yep do you want to hear my rating yeah it's a one out of seven for me <sighs> what's he gonna give it what's he gonna give it what's he gonna give it i want to give it zero but i can't because i did i like that spinny horse thing I, that's yeah i, I recognize somewhere there's a good film if they reshot it all and put good actors in it there and is good changed actors, the title of the film. Well, made the good actors do more of what they're good at. I don't um, understand why they'd sideline him like that. It's like getting Jackie Chan in a film and having him play a person who's paraplegic. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to like this film. Sorry? I really did. I really, really wanted to like this film. The trailer made it look so fucking good. Yeah. Until the witch lady arrived in, like, the third trailer or whatever it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that one. And so we were like, wait, what? Running on walls and shit. If I wanted this film, I'd just watch The Iron Mask. Yeah. Which literally. is, you no know, Pirates of the Caribbean meets Mulan. <laughs> in many ways, that makes sense now. <laughs> yes, it does. Because even this had some Pirates of the Caribbean in it. Yeah. The, Ooh, who's going to fall off a plank of wood? Right. I am going to add a little bit more to my summary. I oh. hope this film can be a base point for young people to get into Kung Fu cinema. All right. Yeah. I hope they can watch this and be, you know, if it's their first taste of Kung Fu, be enchanted by it and go out and source better films you know wheels on wheels they're like oh who's, who's Jet Li who's Donnie Yen and they find better films I hope this film can do that probably but for, but, yeah but for me as someone <laughs> who already knows that whole bag of shit <laughs> I can't in good faith give this a good review I'm conflicted I've never been this conflicted about anything I don't think come on what's your rating I'm gonna have to aren't I it's zero. Zero? I'd, yeah. I didn't even think we could do zero, to be honest. Well, we can do seven, so zero to seven, is it not? Yeah, makes sense. I thought one was the lowest, so can I go zero as well? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Double zero. Boy, oh boy. You can't get worse than that. Oh, it does have a good spinny thing in, but that is not enough to make a good a film. <laughs> Why cast those people and waste them? Hollywood. Especially Disney. if they pander into a Chinese market. Yeah. Uh, I hope it makes no money. Same. Well, we watched it, really. No, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't pay no money for this piece of fucking shit. If I'd paid money for this, I think I'd kill myself. That's and how bad this film is. You know you're going to find it a good version on the internet illegally because it's literally like a DVD into it. It's like yeah. Fucking, it made yeah. me sad, I think. I finished watching it and I came upstairs and started gaming just to try and cleanse the palate. But I couldn't even game properly because I was thinking, what have I just witnessed? <laughs> And it's right. even, even still now, I'm still like, I don't... I it's don't, just one of them films you've got to forget about. I don't think I ever will. I think this will haunt me until the day I die. Make it haunt me. If I ever have to watch this film again, I hope that someone stabs me during it. <laughs> that will be more entertaining than watching this film. <laughs> That's a better summary. I so wanted to like it. I had every faith it was going to be good. Maybe that's my fault for believing in Disney for once. Yeah. Should we get on to wrestling news? Hashtag boycott Mulan. Yep, we're going to put that on the video. Not because of the protests and all that, which because is bad and stuff, just because it's garbage. <laughs> it's a hot fucking mess. <laughs> I'm glad we agree. <sighs> Wrestling news. Do, 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 do. Brock Lesnar's a free agent. Where's he going to go next? Ooh. AW confirmed. Whoa. No. New Japan Pro Wrestling confirmed. UFC confirmed. Local British wrestling company confirmed. <laughs> Who knows? Hey, Who knows? Paul Heyman's got his new bum boy and Brock's all on his own. Who's going to talk for him now? Jake the Snake Roberts. Nah, mate. AW. Next bit of news. Mauro gone. Mauro Ronaldo. Mauro Commentator. Oh. Why Not you me. Who knows? Probably having some bipolar shit again. Can't care less. I'm really just angry now. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm ill angry. I'm just pissed off. Next bit of news. The iconic split. Yep. After what? Six years? Five, six years, yeah. Uh, because Vince sees Peyton as a star. So I won't wow. be surprised if we see Billy Kay getting released in the near future when the next cull occurs. I feel like the two joint at the hip, though. Well, they are, but one of them uh, dyed their hair blonde and has tits. Oh. 
Was she blonde at that pay per view that we watched? It's sort of what's the word I'm after? Lighty blonde? What's the sort of dirty Mousy. blonde? Have I made Mousy. that up? Dirty blonde, yeah, I think that's it. Mucky that's, blonde. If anybody who knows about hair colours is listening to this, <laughs> can, you, can you comment and uh, sort of. We need to know. We, yeah. we can't get in this debacle again. <laughs> But yeah, I, I'm sure if one leaves, the other will ask for the release. Unless they're going to get, like, a title. Um, Retribution. <laughs> Don't get it. Why are they exclusive to Raw? You know what says anarchy to me, Anne? <laughs> Being exclusive to one wrestling brand in a wrestling company. We're only going to mess up <laughs> this brand. We're not going to bother the other brand. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm done. I'm just done. I'm done with everything. I... AOP got released. Yep, they're gone. They're not yeah. with Seth Rollins anymore, are they? Haven't been for a long while. I want to be injured as well. Rip, my brother's favourite Royal Rumble wrestler. Oh, he he did some proper laying in that corner. Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh boy. And that Dick won that Royal Rumble, I believe, as our truth. Yeah. And yeah. The pants bastard was Shane O'Mac as, as the last two. It's because he classic, just threw him out, didn't he? That classic final two matchup, you know. Yeah. Dirty blonde, maybe. Probably. Yeah, probably. The whole Vince shit, the best note <laughs> of the week. Right, Vincent, 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 he... Kennedy McMahon. He's released a letter to all talent uh, saying that they are not allowed, uh, they have 30 days to remove everything or whatever you from Twitch, um, sort of Instagram third party stuff, um, YouTube, I believe, all of this. <laughs> Because it's detrimental to the brand. Um, and if they don't um, comply to this, fines or even firings may occur, which uh, is uh, all kinds of illegal um, because they're not employees of Vince, are they? They're independent contractors. So we don't have to give them health benefits or any of this shit, you know? Um, this decision has been ripped apart on the social medias by various people, yeah. um, imagine. wrestlers, as well as um, um, AEW talent and stuff. No WWE personality has spoken on it um, yet. Well, there is a lot, a lot of talent that uses that has their own YouTube channel, streams, fucking deals yeah. with like Instagram. And, and I know Lana's, Lana's got like a pretty little things deal with Instagram. Yeah. Apparently, apparently Lana's stuff was the straw that broke the camel's back. I've been reading. Right. Okay. Um, I've got a couple of bits that I... Is it because she posts basically nude on Instagram? Mm, I'm not sure on that. But um, yeah, they're called the independent contractors, so they have no benefits or anything. Mm. But you're signed to an exclusive contract. So how can they be independent contractors? You know, so you don't have to pay social security to them and they've got to pay self-employment tax because they're independent contractors, which is 15% of what they earn. Fucking Jesus Christ. Right. And it's just ridiculous. And like, this is part of the reason why Batista left in 2010 mm. when, you, you know, because of all this shit. And like, there's so many of the talent, like the Iconics have both got YouTube channels, Xavier Woods, fucking, what's the name? AJ Liv Styles. Morgan. Yeah, Liv Screams Morgan. Liv Morgan's just set up a YouTube channel. Ruby Riot's got one. Fucking Paige is on Twitch. And she was just like, oh no, Paige commented. She was like, nah, mate, I'm still. Yeah. Doing it. They can't do cameos either, which is a big income source for them. You know, you know cameo, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because a lot of a lot of the wrestlers are on there and stuff, and it's just insane. And there's um a politician called Andrew Yang who's commented on it, saying he'll put an end to Vince McMahon's corrupt labor practices if the Democrats get into power and stuff because his best friend Donald won't be in power anymore. Nice. You know, which we can. It's just a con, isn't it? I, I, so many people will leave. They probably make more money from doing that because they don't yes. have to pay travel expenses or hotel expenses well, the or thing, their own health fucking expenses because they don't get any benefits. The one star who, if he did leave, would be a massive blow to WWE is AJ Styles. Yeah. And he's obviously, he's already said that he's not going to be wrestling for much longer. He's got coronavirus and now he's not allowed to do his streaming stuff that he's been doing for ages. So if I him <laughs> and just be like fuck off i'm retiring 
they can't inf- they can't enforce it if like hundreds of people still are on cameo and this they're not gonna fire their entire roster of talent oh yeah yeah so f- for me i'd just say fucking keep on doing it Fuck yeah this. but the thing is with certain wwe talent the little bitches aren't they so if like a few agree to all the rules they're gonna get a push in wwe and the people that aren't they're gonna get yeah. thrown to the sidelines aren't they it's just it's just shady it's just shady shit it reeks of fucking just pure fucking nastiness definitely i don't i don't like it should we go into clash of champion matches yeah fucking jay uso i want to say uh, is he just called uso now no because there's two of them i know but on the youtube thing <laughs> It said, Roman Reigns is now versing Uso at Clash of Champions. And I was like, what? Let's take a look. Jay. Right, okay, good. Yeah, he won a fatal four-way match involving yeah. Big E, Matt Riddle and Baron Corbin. I thought Corbin were going to win, so we could have the billion Reigns versus Corbin match. But then I realised they're both heels, aren't they? Yeah. I think it was obvious that Jay Uso were going to win because before the match you were like, Yo, man, what's happening? You know. Definitely. Why are you being a nasty? <laughs> Why are you being a nasty boy? And he was like, because he got new teeth. Yeah, and we've got Drew versus Randy announced as well. So they're the two big title fights. It's on on the twenty seventh. So at least we've got more than a week for stories to be built. Yeah, you know, we're gonna watch it. Probably, aren't we? Because we're your sons. No, I'm not. I'm done with WWE. Why if the analyst wants to? Then maybe, I guess. Well, if the Empress wants to, she watched the other one. She oh, did. yeah, by the way, guys, we did watch Payback. <laughs> oh, yeah, we watched Payback. Oh, should, we should probably talk about Payback then. It was better than... Yeah, payback was much better than The Thing. Probably the best pay-per-view we've watched all year. I can't think. Better than WrestleMania? Yeah. <laughs> when Payback's better than WrestleMania. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. But it was a lot better than SummerSlam. The uh, the tag match between Ray, Dominic, Seth and Buddy was good. No, and, uh, it was good shit. Was it Buddy or Murphy? Murphy, innit? One of the fucking two. Who knows anymore? Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, that was... I'd like to just talk um, the All Out results, which was on last night. Oh! Which I forgot about until this morning. <laughs> so... Oh! AEW All Out, you know. It's like their premier event of the year, I think. Is Matt that made, their wrestling? Yeah. Might have made that up, but who fucking cares? <laughs> Joey Janela beat Sir Pentico on the pre-show. Ooh. Private Party defeated the Dark Order on the pre-show. Big Swole defeated Britt Baker by knockout in a tooth and nail match. I've heard that was a cinematic type dealio. The Young Bucks defeated Jurassic Express. I believe that match was to crown the number one contenders for the tag titles. Lance Archer won a 21-man casino battle royale, uh, and the winner receives a future AEW World Championship match. So, nice to see in there. Next, we had a broken rules match between Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara. Um, Hardy won that, but he took a real nasty bump. Like, head concrete kind of nasty bump. Oh, boy. So, yeah. Um, so, maybe give that a look if you want to see some nasty bumpage. You can Karo Shida defeated Thunder Rosa in the women's title match to retain. Uh, Matt Cardona, um, what's his name? Zack Ryder, you know, former. Oh, right. uh, Scorpio Scan, the Natural Nightmares, defeated um, the Dark Order. I don't understand that logic, to be fair, but cool. Uh, FTR, you know, the revival. Uh, yeah. Beat Kenny Omega and Adam Page for the AEW World Tag Titles. Makes sense, because the Elite kicked out Adam Page from the Elite, so he's oh, okay. healing it up now. Orange Cassidy beat Chris Jericho in a Mimosa Mayhem match by knocking him into a vat of Mimosa. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't we watching this? I don't know. And uh, your boy PWI Insiders, number one wrestler of the past year, John Moxley, retained his AW title against MGR. And the last bit of wrestling news: Bailey and Sasha Banks split. Yes, we got uh, past two events. We've had um, little teasers, haven't we? With Bailey being the reason Sasha lost a belt, and then them losing the tag belts to Shayna and Nia at Payback. Bad match. Bad match. Bad match. Shout oh, out, well, out to the ice cream van. Every goddamn time. <laughs> the Empress likes it, though. She does like the ice cream. It's an in-joke now, isn't it? Yeah. Be on a I, could go for, I could go for an ice cream, to be fair. But I've got brownies in, so I might shoot me sent to a brownie later. Oh, no, I, I ain't eaten yet. I didn't really eat yesterday, what with feeling like death. So I'll see. I'll see. I'll see. Bailey and Sasha. Yeah, but um, it looks like Sasha's the babyface going forward. Yeah. I thought they were going to do the opposite. Really? 
Yeah. Bailey's well, a bit I tight. guess it makes sense to have Sash chasing the belt, doesn't it? Yeah. And I imagine a match between them will be announced for Clash of Champions. Yeah. And that's all we've got for you, folks. Wrestling. You have an awareness section. I do. You do? I posted a link, obviously, on the Facebook page recently. Yes. A friend of mine is doing, like, a walking kind of challenge, like as many kilometres you can do in like a month, I believe it is, in aid of Alzheimer's Society, uh, because her nan passed away from Alzheimer's, sadly, five years ago. Um, I posted the link, and if anybody donates, I will match their donation up to £50, because I'm not made of cash. Nice. So if you donate, uh, please message either myself or the pony, if it's one of the ponies kind of friends that do it. If they don't, then I will hunt them down. Stabby, stabby. Yes. So... I'll obviously, it's going on for the entire month, so I'll post that sporadically throughout the, the rest of the month. Also, join our Fantasy Football League. Yep, when does football start? Like seven days. Nice, okay. Um, there's going to be prizes to be had for the winner Ooh. of the thing. Even the ponies entered. Yeah, and I've got Please. some somewhat a decent team somehow. Surprisingly. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, join. Join us in the cave of football. And I guess the last thing we need to do is say, fuck you, Seton. Fuck you, Seton. Little ginger bastard. <laughs> Beautiful. And, we, uh, saw him, we saw him at the weekend, oh, didn't we, last weekend? Yeah, we did, yeah. We all we blanked stay him. for wrestling, though. We all blanked him. Because That's probably he why he didn't stay. He didn't stay because he was tired. I'm tired, I need to go to the gym in the morning. Oh, I'm going to night out last night, I can't stay up again. Oh, I'm going to drink some it. water. Me. Fucking cunt. And he wasn't trying course. to get me to drink. He was trying to get me to drink alcohol. Was he actually? Yeah, he was like, do you want a shot of rum, Ryan? Like, no, I'll have a Fanta Fruit Twist. When did he say that? Before you arrived. Fucking prick. What, just you two? Or was was yeah. it in the room? Just you two? Yeah. What the fuck? You could have easily said yeah. Could have done. I'm proud of you. But I'm stronger than the little ginger. What a motherfucking... Everyone, right, hashtag boycott Seaton. Yeah, and Mulan as well. Trying to make alcoholics alcoholics again. That's a, that's what the Japanese saying is always been, you know. Trying to milk out all these alcoholic again. One ton soup. Yeah, and you know, if there's a rubber duck in the bath, it's a lake, you know. Hashtag boy pop Mulan. Yeah, right. Stay fresh. Stay fresh. Take a ride on someone with a pony. Take a ride on someone with a pony. Stick a ride on someone with a pony. Mr. Pineapple, oh yeah. It's Mr. Pineapple's Wonder Hour.